My name is Kari. I am from Anime Twist. And what Anime Twist is pretty much all about is anime, manga, cosplay, um, interviews, and much, much more. And, you know, interviews with you guys, it actually puts into that much, much more because I always thought that I would only be getting interviews with, you know, comic book artists and, um, cosplayers and I never I tried it once and I was like okay I've got to continue to keep trying this and this is completely amazing so thank you very much Miss Felicia oh you're welcome I'm happy to be here and would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself Let's see. Um, I'm Felicia Angel. I am a voice actor in Dallas, Texas, originally from Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, I've been with Funimation for about a year and a half and been voice acting professionally for four or five years now. Um, aside from anime, I also do uh, kids' toy commercials. So you may have heard me trying to sell stuff to you. Sorry about that. Um, and that's pretty much me. <laughs> Awesome. So my first question, and not, mind you, like if you're, we're still four minutes in before six, so we might get people flooding and be like, "Wait, what? <laughs> They're already going." <laughs> I don't mind backtracking. I'll catch people up. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, common questions are my first two questions because I like to get those out of the way because you get them a lot at you know cons and stuff like that. But um, how did you get into voice acting? Well, um, I have been interested in acting since I was about 10. Um, I got the lead in a tiny little fifth grade class play and I was hooked. Um, and then when I was about 15, uh, anime entered my life uh, through Toonami and Friends and it hit me um, as I was watching these shows and we got so into them that there have to be people who do this for a living. And I wanted to be one of those people who do that for a living. Um, so I started just sort of doing research. Um, meanwhile, I did competitive speech. Uh, I was a theater major in college, just sort of everything, you know, working up to that. Um, my husband and I moved out to Texas about five years ago and just hit the grind, became a professional voice actor, um, got a demo cut, and sent it to Funimation, and got called in for an audition. Nice. Where, where, would you, where were you living before you moved to Texas? Uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. You just said that, and I was just like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> so you were actually next door neighbors before you moved here, huh? Yes. Uh, well, uh, Graham and I uh, had a, a fun sort of meeting in courtship. I, I met my husband uh, in high school. We had one class together. He was only in at my school for one year, and we had one class together. And then I met him again like three years later at an anime convention. Wow. Um, yeah, and it turned out we, uh, we had lived sort of within, you know, spitting distance from each other our whole lives, but we went to different schools. Um, we had a lot of the same interests, and... Um, when I told him that I wanted to move to Texas and be an anime voice actor, he was like, all right, let's do it. And, and here we are. <laughs> so it sounds like you've had a really good support system in your marriage. Oh, absolutely. He's amazing. He's one of the biggest nerds I know, and I love it. And, uh, and I mean, it's so cheesy, but he really is my biggest fan. Uh, and he geeks out with me every time a cast is announced or every time I'm like, oh my God, I went to the studio today and I met Sunny Strait. And he's like, oh my God, you talked to Krillin. And, <laughs> you know, we just have fun together. <laughs> well, um, so what is some advice that you could give to our listeners that uh, are looking into a career like yours? Um, I think... It's one, it's probably the most common, but it, it bears repeating, is be an actor. Uh, take classes, not just in voiceover. Learn acting fundamentals. Um, do improv, which I hate. It's scary, but do it. Um, you know, really immerse yourself in learning a craft. 
and then transition into a specialty. Um, another thing is you have to go where the work is um, if you want to do anime. Um, you can, you know, uh, voice acting is much more accessible now with uh, the way technology is booming. I mean, I'm talking to you right now on a mic that was really inexpensive with a little foam eyeball around it, and it's relatively passable quality, and that was very little effort. So with it being accessible, you can do um, other types of work remotely from just about anywhere, but with anime, it's still, um, because of the dubbing process, in studio if you want to do that you have to move to where the studio is they aren't gonna hear you on youtube and say they're great let's fly them in every week you know yeah so uh just be realistic uh dedicate yourself to the craft and follow the work that's good advice um so this is i mean we, i was talking to you about autograph poker cards earlier that was me um, <laughs> but um, what are some odd requests in in that kind of sense that you've gotten from your fans you know I've actually uh, at this point I've only done one convention which was mini Acon I got a, a couple coming up but uh, from that one somebody um, had done like paint renderings not like not like paint and paintbrush, like the computer program paint renderings of a few of my characters, which was interesting. Um, and he had them like cataloged in manila folders for like each person, like their characters. And he had done these and like it was it was kind of cool. Like, wow, you came so prepared. Um, an another guy had all of our anime news network credits printed out and categorized and was having assigned stuff like he was looking through and be like oh, okay so you're this character here i have this merchandise like dvd covers and stuff uh someone had to sign a shoe i like i liked it. it it didn't smell bad that was my only concern was like or how worn is this shoe because i don't mind signing weird stuff but i don't want your athlete's foot <laughs> But it was a clean shoe, so well, that's felt good. better about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I know that you've done an excellent handful of voices, but uh, where does your inspiration come for come from for your voices? Um. It it's always the character. Uh. I am very character driven when it comes to acting in any sense. Um. So I really like to get a a sense of who they are as a person and sort of build the voice on that. Um, a lot of times uh, vocal qualities and people come from arrested emotional states. So like people who maybe had a lot of trauma as a kid will have higher pitched little girl voices. It's a cool psychology thing if you want to look it up. Um, so I'll, I'll go with that sometimes. And then, you know, there's the design, there's the world, there's the, uh, the situation and the genre too. Um, it lets you know like how cartoony you can go with it. Um, like a show like Fairy Tale, you can be a little broader with it. You can go a little too high, you can push a little too hard and like be really energetic. And then with some of the other shows, um, you want to scale it back a little bit because it's more of a slice of life sort of Right. girl next door type thing so um you you really just you build the voice based on all of the things that you have and then also on what the director wants because they have the scope of the entire show in their heads um which makes them a little kooky uh but you just got to go with it even if you're thinking i why would you want me to say it like that you see it later and you go oh it's because then they say and then later okay i get it i get it He's not a crazy person. He probably is, but in that moment, he wasn't crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you when you're doing your voices and you're you're picturing what the character is going to look like in your head, um, or I mean, I mean, I'm sure that you see a picture of them, what you're going for beforehand. But um, did you ever become attached to your characters? 
Oh God, yes. Um, I, you, you find a little piece of yourself in all of them, and it really endears them. Um, I, uh, Oshiroi from Bento, struck this chord with me that I just I, I was talking to the character in the booth. Sometimes we'd be, you know, I would have just done a line, and uh, she has kind of a, a sad backstory moment where she just talks about being picked on, and I do the lines, and while they're laying the tracks in and, you know, matching it to the flaps and all of that, I was just telling her, so you, you are going to be okay, girl. You know, screw those guys. You are cute, and you're funny and you're gonna be just fine and I just loved her to pieces I just I wanted her to be okay <laughs> well with what I was thinking um did you go on a roller coaster of emotions with Coco on Fairy Tale? you know you do you do uh Coco man she her whole life changes in these scenes and uh, and you've got to be there with her, or it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sound right. It it sounds like you're just reading. So yeah, we went from, you know, she knows that she's on the the winning side, and what they're doing is right, to realizing she she picked the wrong team, man, and uh, and her friend is in trouble, and then this pretty princess shows up and saves the day um but yeah you go through this whole journey with her and uh she gets to grow as a character in a way that was really interesting because she's not a member of the main cast and so that was a sort of a new experience for me was having a s sort of side character um really have this arc and this character journey where coco at the end of yeah, you know, the Edelis arc is not the same girl from the beginning. Right. Um, so I'm sure you have tons of stories for this next question. Um, what are some humorous events that happen in the course of your career that you can share with us? Huh. Um, Let's see. God, that's it's it's broad, so it's hard to sort of pin them down. Um, the the in the booth moments are always fun. Um, you know, everybody is just freaking hilarious. Um, let's see. Uh, working on a show uh, with Jerry Jewell. Uh, he and the engineer came up with a song for, because like the, the whole show was just so many reactions. And so they, um, they came up with like a duet called reaction town, uh -huh. um, which was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, I, the, the first time I ever did any, uh, type of work for Mike McFarland, um, I was doing just, a bit character for one piece and uh i was in the booth and he goes uh can you burp <laughs> and i said not like right now what do you and he was like nah yeah no the girls can never do it hold on and he just came in in the booth and the mic was adjusted for my height and he's several inches taller than i am so he just like squats down does this like cool little move and burps on command into the mic it was like, all right, we got that one. Moving on, uh, we got a, what is it, like a goat or something? Can you do a goat? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he is a pro at that. Uh, <laughs> gosh. And I'm sure there's, there's a million just tiny little things like that. Um, you know, you just go through the course of the day with really funny people and you get, you get entertained. <laughs> All right, so we've got about five people, you being one of them. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions and you're having a hard time trying to figure out how to ask, uh, just go ahead and type up something, and when you hit enter, it's going to ask you for a username. So go ahead and pop in a username. Uh, you don't have to sign up for anything, and you should be good to go. Just throw an ad out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... What is the voice you've done that is the first, furthest away from your real voice? Rainair from High School DxD. That would, that's, that would so, like, it, that's it. 
Can you give us an example? Um, my favorite line that she does is actually a blend because this character has two voices um, because she's a baddie in disguise and she shows up as just sort of the typical cute high school girl. But then it turns out she's a demon succubus from hell, um, <laughs> as most high schoolers are from my experience. But um, there's a moment where she asks Issei, who she's on a date with, if he'll do something for her. She says, will you die for me? And like, just totally goes into that like deep, sexy voice. And it's something I don't do very often at all. <laughs> Usually they have me, I'm like, little girl, way up here. Raz P, or Razip, uh, asks, what can you say about The Devil is a Part-Timer? That it's awesome and you should watch it. <laughs> it is. It's, it's hilarious. Um, everyone that I got to hear in the booth, because we record separately, so sometimes you'll be in after someone. Um, everybody did a great job. Bevins is a mad scientist, genius director, uh, and it's it's going to be great. It's one of my absolute favorites. Um, are there any other voice actors that you like working with? Oh, yeah. Um, pretty much everybody I've met. Like, it, it sounds like such a PC answer and, like, really kumbaya, <laughs> but it's true. I have liked everyone I've met. Everybody's really nice. Um, it's, they're all just nice, humble people. Um, I guess that we, uh, we work separately, so we only get to come together for commentary, mm -hmm. um, but it, those have all been absolutely fantastic everybody's warm and welcoming um i'm friends with a couple of people it outside in my real life like uh, michelle rojas who just got uh announced as toka for i don't know if we're going with date alive or date a live um but either or and uh cliff chapin who was on the program a few weeks ago yes, is a buddy of mine uh so he, he I like actually. Those I, guys. I, I would be. I would be surprised if he decided to crash this interview as well. Like. Yeah. He, no, that's his thing. He <laughs> he, he, he crashed uh, the last interview I had with Natalie Hoover. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're buddies too. <laughs> <laughs> so um. <clears throat> yeah. How are how are you doing today? <laughs> um. What do you do to prepare? Blah, blah, blah. What do you do to prepare for a role? Um. Uh, usually, I'll do a little bit of research into the show. Um. It it really depends on the role and uh, sort of how how big it is. Um, who's directing, if they would prefer that you don't watch the material or whatever. Um, it's, it's really um, sort of just getting the idea from the director of what they want out of the character and then building on it using those acting fundamentals I mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, if there was something you could change about the industry, what would it be and why? Hmm. That's tough. Um I mean in a in a magic world where we could do anything, um it would be fun to be able to have the other actors in the room like you do with prelay animation. That would be fun. Um I guess it, it's not really about the industry. It's a little about the community. I um, I would change sort of the way people address each other. I've just noticed lately that um, there's a lot of people who will come at something they dislike uh, really just nastily. And uh, why can't we all just get along, man? Why can't we be friends? Yeah. <laughs> it's... 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. I just, um, and I mean, I guess that's not exclusive to anime culture or to any particular fandom. It's uh, a general internet thing, but I just, you know, I, I feel like such an old lady. I'm like, where are your manners? <laughs> Did your mother teach you that? Oh. Uh, Ras P wants to know, have you ever felt uncomfortable in a role? There were a couple of touch-and-go moments in Aesthetica that uh, were a little bit like, oh, okay, that's happening. <laughs> but, you know, on the whole, I don't really have a threshold for that kind of stuff. It's all a, it's all a fantasy. You know, it's all meant to be extreme. Um, so it doesn't really, like, you know, I didn't go home going like, oh, you'll never believe what I had to do today. It was just, <laughs> you know, you see the scene and you're like, oh, all right, we're doing that. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> um, by the way, I have to commemorate you. That was, you did a very excellent job in that anime, for sure. Thank you. Um, she is always going to have... A, a special place for me because she was my first lead role and um it it was it was one of the scariest happiest times for me uh because you're ecstatic that you you got it and then you realize like oh I gotta like go do well now uh, <laughs> uh, like I hope I don't mess it up um but yeah I I think she's a sweetheart of a character and I loved getting to to go through her journey and also it uh you know it was kind of a little mirroring that time in my life where she starts out unsure of herself and then through the the support of those around her sort of finds her feet in the end and you know I was still just so new and out of my depth and everyone especially Colleen I I can't praise Colleen Clinkenbeard highly enough she's amazing um was just really supportive and re really nurturing at that time and I came out of the experience just a much stronger actor so on that note what work are you the most proud of, and what are you, what is the least? I I don't think I have anything I'm not proud of. I mean, that God, that sounds so egocentric, doesn't it? <laughs> this is like I'm fabulous, but you know, um, you know, if if it's something that I'm that I'm willing to do and I'm willing to send it out into the world with my name on it, I'm I'm proud of that. Um, most proud is tough um yeah let's i you know it's it's not out yet but i am tremendously proud of the work i did on on part-timer um it it was way on the the side of comedy which is something I mean I've done but I I feel more comfortable with drama um so she was very funny um I had to go uh, pretty deep into some emotions with her at certain points and you know at at the end of the show I I was really sad it was over D. Lily wants to know, have you ever cosplayed a role before? Not one of mine, but I have cosplayed. Um, I actually, I, I was saying earlier that I had met my husband at an anime convention, and at the time I was dressed as Reno from Final Fantasy VII or Advent Children, depending on what you know. Um, I was like, I was like cross-playing, though. I didn't like look like a dude. Um, <laughs> Gender bent. Yes, yes. Is that, is that rule 63? Is that the right rule? If it's not, it's probably something, like, really dirty. Sorry. But, uh, 73? Damn it. There are rules. Um, but yeah, I, I've done that. Um, I did, like, I, I do really casual cosplay. Uh, I've done Rogue from the 90s X-Men anime. Um, done Pinkie Pie. 
from My Little Pony. Um, I'm actually getting ready for Akon right now. I started uh, spray painting a vest today for their world record attempt. So are you, uh, are you going to be crashing Akon? Not well. Yes and no, but they. I I go almost every year as a guest, uh, not as a guest, as a just as an attendee. And so I I'm doing that. I'm going and hanging out with um, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, we got a room and we're just going to be hanging out. Um, I may pop up in a panel, uh, but I've been asked to. Unlike some people who will remain nameless who show up at conventions. <laughs> I think he knows who he is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I was already planning on on being there just as a as a guest. Uh, God damn it, I keep saying that as a <laughs> as an attendee. I'm not a guest at Acon, guys. <laughs> oh, this but, is the point of the program where Felicia loses her mind. <laughs> He crashed, didn't he crash uh, Mini Akon too? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to him, I think like he was there just saying hi to people and they were like, oh, you do the voices? Come, be part of this. <laughs> so I don't think he showed up and he was like, Clifford is here, make me a guest. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they asked him. Um,. What is your favorite thing about being a voice actress? I think it's how much the work changes. Um, you know, I can I can go in one week three different times and do three completely different things. You don't get bored. Uh, and it, it's really creatively fulfilling when you get to go in and create on these different levels and it's just constantly changing. So, as you know, I've talked, I've talked with Clifford, um, I've also talked with Elizabeth Maxwell and Natalie Hoover, and I'm talking with you, and in my past interviews, I've learned that you guys all record in separately, in, 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 you know, in recording sessions, um, than in a group session. Do you find it difficult to develop a chemistry, or the illusion of the chemistry, without ever interacting with one another? It can be, but the directors are really great at leading you to where it's going to go. And, um, you know, if, if you do get to hear someone pretty consistently, you start to learn what the line is likely going to sound like when they say it. Um, you know, uh, for, for part-timer, it was like that there were only a few episodes where I had Josh Greeley to work off of. But having those episodes, uh, when I came in later, before he had recorded, it was easier to have that banter, knowing a little bit about the way he delivers lines. So um, it can be difficult, but with the with the right direction, which everyone is great at, um, and sort of you know getting those little glimpses, it you you fall into a pattern with it, and it's much easier. So these next few questions that I have, they're just like random, ra like random generated questions. I, I ran out of cool, awesome ideas. But um, <laughs> if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Ooh. Huh. I, I, I guess I'm going to go with my gut because my first instinct was Ireland. I, I have never visited, but I've always wanted to, and it looks beautiful and... It's, you know, it's the home of my ancestors. Raspy wants to know, what is the funniest line in an anime you have said? <sighs> the ists are hard. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's one from Part Timer, which has not come out. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to, like, harp on my one thing, like, you can't go and watch right now. You just can't. Um, uh, and, and, and I know about the, the NDA that y'all signed. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think it's... <laughs> but, uh, no, there's... Emmy is awful with comebacks. Um, you know, like, she's just constantly at 
Mao, like, you know, trying to, to diss him, and, and he is so much better at it than she is. Um, and we kind of build on that, and it culminates in one of the last episodes where he calls her Tiny Tits. And she's, what? But no, you have tiny tits. <laughs> and that's one of my favorites ever. She just, Sammy. Do you do when you're not in the studio? Um, I am a casual video gamer. Um, just finished a playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I was really glad to see it get the the HD upgrade. It's one of my favorite games ever. It's just super special to me. I actually I walked down the aisle to the orchestrated version of Simple and Clean. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I it's been a, a big part of my nerd life. Um, I watch a lot of shows. <laughs> um, I just started gardening on my apartment balcony, which has been fun. Uh, it led to a moment of madness last week. There was a crow. Um, the, the people downstairs have a bird feeder, and there's this obnoxious crow who kept pulling my tomato plants out, and I turned into some sort of psycho woman. I just, I wanted that bird dead. Um, that worked so hard. And so it was just the whole day was me sitting on the couch, staring intently out of the window, yelling at Graham to throw a pillow every time I saw the bird. It's, bird, 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 get it! And, uh, but it's, it's scary because later that day I was reading like a list verse list and, uh, it was about crazy things animals do. And they were like, crows can recognize faces and they will have vendettas against, uh, humans they think are unsafe. And I was like, crap, I, the bird mafia has me on a hit list somewhere now. Oh, it's going to be the birds all over again. I know, right? It's, it's Hitchcock all over my balcony. I'm just waiting for it. When you least expect it, just the, the, you'll just be barraged. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, uh, so what are some of your plans for the future? Well, um, after this, I'm probably going to eat some nachos. <laughs> I like to plan ahead. Um <laughs> Um, honestly, right now, I'm just working, and I'd like to continue to work. Um, I am hoping, I, I have a couple of conventions uh, booked for um, this year and next year, and I'd really like to continue to do that, so if you guys would like to see me, <laughs> go, tell, go tell your local convention that, that I'm cool, <laughs> and they should fly me out there. Um, and just sort of, uh, I, I kind of go with the flow and, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. I guess work while I have the work and figure everything else late out later. <laughs> well, you kind of just answered kind of, sort of, just kind of a little bit, like, like a pinch of salt kind of answered my next, my, my next and final question from me. Um, what are, are there any conventions we should, would be able to see you at? Yes. Um, I think I can only talk about one right now, but I will be back in my hometown of Lafayette, Louisiana for Louisiana May, uh, June 12th through 14th. Oh, it's in June. Uh, and yeah, 13th through 15th. And my buddy Clifford Chapin will be there with me. And he's not uh, crashing this time. No, he was invited. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that'd be a, this is a long way to go to crash. <laughs> uh, Raspy wants to know, would you ever come to the UK? Absolutely, if I were invited. Um, I, I would love to travel and to meet all of you guys. Um, you just, they, they gotta ask me, because I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fly to the UK to crash. 
<laughs> well, you could fly to the UK just to fly to the UK and visit the sites. That's true. That I mean, would be fun. I mean, isn't Ireland a part of the UK? I honestly don't know. There's a whole thing about it. Because, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Raz, <laughs> you could enlighten us for my lack of geographic knowledge. <laughs> um, I would go to Ireland just because if you're tall, I was, oh, I've always wanted to go to Ireland when I was 14. Because if you're tall enough to reach over the bar, you're tall enough to drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, this brings into question, though, I'm pretty sure how tall are the bars. <laughs> I would be a sad panda that if I got all the way over there. It's like, aww. Uh, Dilili wants to know how many language do you, languages do you speak? Uh, just the one. Um, I do have a rudimentary grasp of French um, from middle and high school um, and a, a smattering of Cajun French just in random phrases that you pick up when you live in southwest Louisiana. Raspi says Northern Ireland is a part of the UK. That's the thing. Yeah, I knew that Ireland itself is divided, and I didn't know. And it's like a, it's like I didn't want to start an international incident. Being <laughs> like, yeah, it's all, it's all part, it's all the same thing, right? So, so sorry. <laughs> um, you know what? We should rush up on Italia because that would explain everything, wouldn't it? Mm, I think so. I it's it's the most reputable source for learning world history. Oh, I yes. think yes. <laughs> I, I think that if if high school provided it, they would learn a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, world history with Italia. Oh, I yes. <laughs> people would pay more attention. Okay. Promise that. Oh yeah. Um, and I mean, if you if you're really into nationality and languages and stuff I mean there's people that actually paint their nails the colors of the flags oh wow flags. yeah it's interesting so guys do you have any other questions I'm gonna be really sad if we get this closed out at 6 30 <laughs> oh it's because I talk fast <laughs> oh my goodness I could, I could actually pull up, uh, or have you pull up a script for, like, Star Wars or something and have you <laughs> do a voice or voice. You should find some, some bad fan fiction. I'll read that. <laughs> read that in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, let me see. Um, I wrote to our scenario where Felicia is going to be reading some Gundam Wing fan fiction that is probably going to get me flagged on YouTube for. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, everyone. This is called The Road to Kindness. <laughs> Chapter One, The Move. It was ridiculous. He was 17 years old, yet here he was, sitting in the principal's office like some little kid. It was completely nuts. He supposed he could bring up his mother's name, though that was childish itself. Despite what his so-called peers thought, Hiro Yui could take care of himself, and he certainly didn't need the name Yui to get out of this messy situation. He smirked, and the receptionist paled at the feral look on the imposing boy, looking away quickly, nervously. It amazed him how it was because of that name people continued to challenge his strength. It was because of that he was here, awaiting judgment once again. He settled back in his chair, completely relaxed. It didn't matter. It would end the same as always. No one in this pitiful country would dare cause trouble for the Yui family. I'm loving this already. <laughs> the principal, an overweight man in his fifties with a nervous look and pasty complexion, ushered Hiro into his office. Hiro straightened out his black t-shirt and jeans with a diplomatic flair as though it was the principal who had done the offense and not the blue-eyed teenager with the bruises on his knuckles. Uh, m Mr. Yui, pl please sit. Your mother will be here shortly, the man stammered. Hiro looked at him with a simple glance of annoyance, but sat down. The man hurriedly left the office, apparently terrified of being in Hiro's presence all alone. Hiro snorted. It was no wonder that this school was so pitiful if such a weak little man like that was running the show. 
he drummed his fingers on the hard wood of the chair. It was a nice office, everything dark wood and clean cut, but it was what he expected from the principal of a private British high school. Okay, all right. Good set in the scene now. I was in Japan, but no. <laughs> Even in a place like this that catered to England's elite, a boy like Hiro Yui, heir to the Yui Empire of Japan, stood out. With a Japanese mother and a Russian father, all right, it wasn't much of a surprise. There were ja several Japanese students here, but none with spiky, messy brown hair and deep blue eyes. Those eyes were the trademark of the Yui men as far back as his great-great-grandfather had had them had had, and his father had passed them down to him, through his, though his facial features were reminiscent of his mother's father. Man, we are getting in detail about <laughs> what a character who has obvious references looks like. Google it. It's, it's paragraph two. Google it. <laughs> He was tall at almost six feet, unusual for one with Asian heritage, and looked intimidating even to the snobbish, brutal punks that littered the school. He would have cursed his mother for sending him to a place that did not suit his needs, but that spiel had grown old, and if there was one thing that Hiro hated, it was repetition. Hiro started to tap his foot as the minutes passed, and still no one came for him. This was utterly ridiculous. He was a junior in high school, the single heir to a billion-dollar company, and he was sitting here waiting to be scolded. This whole place was just like the principal's office, opulent but useless. The whole process was useless, really. It didn't matter if he passed his classes or not. Either way, he was going to fill in his father's shoes in the end, good grades notwithstanding, so what was the point of even attending school? What was the point of making friends when in the end he knew that everyone would either leave in fear of his status or stick to him like glue, hoping to become someone special while riding his coattails like some parasite? All that mattered was looking out for himself and trying to make sure no one mistook him for the kind of person that would let everyone else do his dirty work. Though he supposed that it was that sort of attitude that kept bringing him here. All right, we're gonna. D. Lily wants to know how often do you read fanfiction? Can I plead the fifth on that? <laughs> yes, you uh, can. <laughs> not, not as much anymore, but enough that I know how to read these, okay? <laughs> uh, no, it was funny. Uh, my character in Bento, Oshiroi, uh, that was one thing that drew me to her was in the sides. They were talking about, um, like, you know, uh, the, the sides are the audition uh, bits that we get where uh, they'll have a little picture and the character's name and a little description from the director and then the lines uh, that we're going to read. And for hers, it said that um, she spent a lot of her time writing yaoi fan fiction about people that she knows. And I said, I, I gotta have her. I gotta have this character. Um, it, it was just amazing. I... Um, I, I used to author some yaoi back in my day, and uh, it uh, it just brought me right back there. And those are some of my favorite parts. Is uh, her her friend, the the main character, will do something. She like whips out a notebook, and she's like, "Oh yeah, this is getting hot," you know. I'm just amazing. <laughs> See if uh, we can skip past some of this exposition here. This it's it's all heroes a badass. Heroes a badass. I I didn't re pre read it before, so I have no idea who's in it and what what's going on. So I left that surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is multi chapter. <laughs> <laughs> man, let's see. We're getting some backstory about Hero's dad, who I guess is sick. <laughs> dad is sick or something and he's alexi yui which is interesting because i thought the dad was the russian run but all right well <laughs> i'm sorry i don't mean to to pick at the verisimilitude of the oh, <laughs> of no, the no. online fan fiction <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
I told them that they, you, you guys can still all ask questions while she's reading. <laughs> oh, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Han Hanami Balwa is like dim fanfics. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I may have been reading Avengers fanfiction earlier today. Because uh -oh. Loki, you guys, come on. <laughs> We we all know. We all know. So if DC if the DC universe and Marvel universe were in a fight with each other, who do you think would win? Like who in the universe or like which universe? Yeah, which which universe? I gotta go with Marvel because mutants. <laughs> there's there's so many just like there's mutants everywhere. Um and who knows? what kind of crazy powers would just, like, surface, you know, mm -hmm. when they all come together. That, and I've always got to put money on Wolverine to go Berserker. Touché. Sorry, I'm still scrolling through this, trying to get to... <laughs> oh, oh, Trace Kushranada just showed up. That's fun. Oh, he's the principal of Peter's High in, in St. Peter's, Maine. So it looks like Hira got himself kicked out of, uh... Out of British Academy. <laughs> but I didn't catch the name, so now it's just British Academy. It was Hogwarts. <laughs> Hogwarts. Okay, yeah, it's Hogwarts. Raz, Raz P was like, yes, but Superman. Oh, uh, that's true. But, like, uh, he's at home. He's got a cold and <laughs> in my universe. Because <laughs> he just comes in and he's like, I do all the things. And... You know, they actually had someone on YouTube actually made it uh, like a computer simulated thing where they took all of what was learned in about Superman and all of what was learned about Goku and made a computer generated fight to see who would win. Wow. And Superman actually wins because Goku ends up throwing him into the sun. <laughs> And evidently the sun is Superman's main power. Mm-hmm, because Goku is not a brilliant strategist. We have all learned. <laughs> <laughs> but it all starts out like, um... <clears throat> I can sense a powerful presence! I should go fight them! And he goes and runs to, like, Metropolis and starts a fight with Superman just because he can. And Superman's like, I have no idea who the hell you are or why you're fighting me, but this is futile. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so here I got in trouble with Trey's. And uh, he's keeping an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure won't come up later. Uh, You're you're just looking for the juicy stuff. I am. I am, man. This is this is a this is this one has a lot of exposition, guys. I mean, they're <laughs> doing great character development here. Um, really setting up the world for us. So, uh oh, Duo just showed up. He's in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, Trace is not happy with him. He's skipping classes. Bell's like, quote unquote, juicy stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, she, and then she or he screams, Duo Maxwell! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I may run and hide, but I'll never tell a lie. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Ting! That's, I always add that. It's a long-running joke, and I, I realize that I have to explain it. It's We always just imagine it with, like, a big, cheesy, like, toothpaste commercial smile, and then, like, the shine off of it. So it's me in a nutshell. Ding! Um, oh, what was it? Have you ever seen Gurren Lagann? I have not. It is one that it's... I have a huge backlog of stuff I need to watch, and it's very high up on my list. Um, but I'm really interested in watching the dub, and it's difficult to find. Uh, I've actually unless... watched the dub free online. On, really? On the actual person or the actual company's website. Really? How did I miss that? 
How did I miss legal streaming? Because I'm, I'm not going to. Don't pirate kids. No, Pirates no. have scurvy. And, and, and if you eat berries, you get weird powers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the reason why I asked is because as soon as you get done watching Grand Logan, I highly suggest you watch Kill a Kill. I am two episodes into Kill a Kill, started it last night. It is amazing. It really picks up after episode 12. Just so you know. It picks up? It picks God, it's up. so, it is frenetic. I, uh, we are, we are loving it. It, uh, it reminds me of so many things fused together uh-huh. that, like, I, I was trying to explain it to somebody earlier. I was like, it's slice of life meets berserk meets, like, I don't know. It's everything. It is all. It's got, like, DBZ and schoolgirls and, well, and Mako. Well, you know, and then uh, Gynax, the, uh, the troll company that they are. Um, and the only reason why I say that is because of how they left PSG off. They they did wrong with panty stocking or panty and stocking with garter. Uh, they did so wrong. Done us wrong. Because <laughs> um, I'm sure that you've watched that, right? I have only seen one episode. Um, my <laughs> my backlog goes all the way back to Oron High. Okay, it is <laughs> it's years, well, and I'm on like episode five of that. If anybody's interested, I am. I get busy and I have this really awful habit of starting like 10 things at once and getting overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I'm I surprised my backlog doesn't go back to Cowboy Bebop. It is just <laughs> massive. I love Cowboy Bebop. Oh. Uh, me too. I actually, um, well, I'm wearing my Vegeta shirt right now, but um, I just got a Cowboy Bebop shirt in from like T Magnet. Uh, it's got like a big picture of Ayn and like a bonsai tree and the whole thing shaped like a poker chip for Faye and <laughs> love it. Um, the reason why I was bringing up Grand Logan though is that uh, if you're watching Kill a Kill, there's one line that Kamina says at, at in the like the first couple of episodes and he's just like, "Who the hell do you think I am?" And I picture. The main character that's fighting everybody in the high school, just saying, just who the hell do you think I am at any moment? It never happens, though. But I just picture it, because it's just like that kind of, as soon as um, that song comes on, uh, Until My Body Is Dry, <clears throat> as soon as that song comes on, I'm just picturing it. Okay, say it now. No, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, okay. Duo and Hero are finally in the same classroom. I'm assuming because they haven't said Duo's name, but they said Violet Eyes, and we know that's him. Um, although my unofficial guide to Gundam Wing says that Duo's eyes are cobalt, so I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> I'm stirring up controversy here on Anime <laughs> Twist. <laughs> Hashtag cobalt versus violet. Um... <laughs> You know what? I'm actually. I'll do that. I will put up yeah. and try and make that trend on Twitter. Yes, and we're gonna have great success trending something tonight because who's watching Attack on Titan? Nobody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone. Everyone, sadly. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, get, we'll we'll get a little bit of this. It's, uh, hi. That's. I don't know why here it sounds like that. Sorry, guys. I just started with that. Hi. Hiro tried to break the ice, smiling sexily at the boy. At 17 years old, Hiro had had time to explore his sexuality and had discovered that he was gay. What this meant for his future, he didn't know, but he did know that some part of himself was attracted to this American. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Huh, the boy said and walked away. Hiro stared at his back in shock. What had just happened? Was the kid really ignoring him? Was he playing coy, or did he really not care about Hero's presence? Notice me, senpai. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Hero got up, shoving his new book in his book bag, and ran after the much shorter boy. 
It was only when he stood that he realized how slight and small the long-haired teen was, but that didn't faze him. He certainly wasn't the shortest boy in class, but compared to Hero's height, he was smaller. But just right. I'm so glad we worked that detail out. Because, you know, I was really very invested in how they would look standing next to each other. Bow, Bow was like, senpai! Yeah! <laughs> Oh, man. Now, <laughs> who has Photoshop sh skills? I need, like, kawaii hero now. I need that in my life. I, I, I have Photoshop skills. <laughs> if you could just make that happen, that'd be great. <laughs> Put him like, a little school go girl uniform and, like, the blush lines. <laughs> I can totally make that happen. <laughs> Although, I think hero would be totally soon. I mean, he's... <laughs> You know, blowing himself up and all that. Oh, yeah. Let's see. We lost, we lost track of thought. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> see, okay, that's right. Uh, we just figured out that Duo was the exact right height to date Hero. Yep. Which was very important for all of our lives. So, hey, wait, he called, grabbing the boy's arm and pulling him back. The boy glared at him from behind his glasses, and Hero saw that both the nose and one of the joints of the glasses were tied with tape, and the left lens had a small crack in it. "'What is wrong with you?' Hero demanded. "'I'm Hero Yui!' "'I know,' the boy interrupted, looking away from Hero's eyes. "'Then why? The world doesn't revolve around you!' the American snapped. Hero stared at him with wide eyes. Only his mother had dare s dared to snap at him before." He didn't like it one bit. You're gonna learn that sad fact sooner or later, the boy murmured and broke away from Hero's grip, disappearing into the hall. Hero watched him go in amazement. The boy truly didn't care about who he was. He had even scolded him without fear. Hero should have been angry about that, but he only felt intrigued. He had to know him, and he vowed by the end of the week he would be more than just close friends with him, whether the kid wanted that or not. Hero, no means no. That is unacceptable. No. <laughs> Hero, that's bad. We all need a very special after school episode to let us know that that's not right. <laughs> no means no. We yeah. learned that. What, what, what was that one clown's name on, um, I, and I say clown in a, in a right way because the the actress that was playing the, the the person was actually supposed to be like a dolled up clown, and she actually puts on her show that no means no, no means no. Oh God, I have not seen that. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm disappointed in Hero. That was that's not nice. It's, Silver hair. Is that Zex? Is that who just... Yep, that's who showed up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, I'm skimming for keywords because this is a... No pun intended. This is a meaty fanfic. <laughs> this has got a lot of content is what I mean. The quote poor unquote, adjective. Quote, unquote, meaty. Meaty. Oh, do you like guys I, have any voice acting questions? I know, right? I'm just I'm sitting here waiting for somebody to just pop something up. We've got six people, you included, watching. <laughs> Signal boost myself is what happens. So. <laughs> Promotion. Promotion. And I, and I said, welcome to Gundam Wing Fanfic Readings by Felicia and Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone oh. left, and I was like, aw. Aww, why'd you leave us? I don't know. I, I bet it was Hero's fault. It's probably Hero's fault. Hero's being aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Woo. So is it like pages? Because like I said, I didn't even look at it. Yeah, no, it is. This is, it's huge. Um... So Duo got beat up by Zex, I think. I don't know why Zex is a bully, but that's not okay either. Zotus wants to know, has there been a role that you cringe at when listening to? 
I I have a hard time with a lot of my stuff because it's weird to hear yourself. Um, I don't know that I, I ever cringe, but uh, definitely going back and listening to some of my earlier stuff, I'm like, God, I, I wish I had done that differently. But uh, but you can't go back. But uh, yeah, a lot of my my very first things that came out, you go back and listen to, and you're like, ah. Probably uh, the only time I've ever cringed is I I've gone back and listened to my first ever like homemade demo reel from like years and years ago. Like, what was I thinking? I put that on the internet. People listen to that. <laughs> and, and you know, once it's on the internet, there ain't never any. Ever, ever getting rid of it. <laughs> but yeah, guys, well, she's reading fanfics and trying to find the meaty parts or the, the juicy parts. <laughs> Either one doesn't sound great. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> Feel free to ask her questions. <laughs> I'll just stop her where she's at and be like, hey, you know. Someone, uh, Val wants to know, can she, can, I, she can say, or he can say, I am hyped for Devil is Part-Timer, though. I am, too. I am the conductor of the hype train for Part-Timer. I am so excited. Um, the show is one of the funniest I've, I've ever worked on. Um, the characters are great. I had watched it, um, actually before they even... Uh, had announced uh, the home video rights for it. I was watching it simulcast. And it was, you know, just one of my favorite. I mean, it, it played alongside Titan. So that was a tough season to be able to call a favorite. But as far as comedy, it is just top notch. The actors are all great. Um, Tia, actually, I, I was distracted by how adorable she sounded. There were a couple of times I was like, supposed to be doing lines and I was like what oh sorry she's just so cute it's impossible to be this cute isn't it she does it uh, I, uh, but yeah no, wait, 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 wait. Val said I saw the simulcast too I'm so glad it's getting dubbed and the cast seems great oh thanks yeah we're all I, I think everybody who worked on it is excited and um it, it's just so fun. Like it, the show has so many like little details that we spent time on. I mean, it was a show where we would do multiple takes on reactions because they're the faces that go with them are so funny that you just got to like nail a specific, like, ugh sound, you know? And, uh, it and it's worth it. It's it's gonna be great. And she also she or he Val, well, you need to tell me if you're a male or female <laughs> <laughs> says that Tia's voice is the dorbs. Mm-hmm. Yes, the faces, oh my god, they are amazing. Um <laughs> Val says dim faces. Uh <laughs> and, and they're a guy. <laughs> Yay. Now we know we can be appropriate. We can be appropriate, and I can actually say, he says this. Oh, oh, we stumbled onto some stuff, but I'm not going to read that. <laughs> that is no means no. Why doesn't anybody know that in fanfic? It's not okay. So I'm guessing Hero hasn't put on his right face yet? No, Hero has not. Sorry, Duo has a tragic backstory, as Duo always does. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've ever encountered any <laughs> any stories where Duo's life was just great and peachy keen. But Ball's like, Hero, please. Oh, <laughs> Hero, what are you doing? Hero, stop. <laughs> oh, look, it's Solo, and he's alive. <laughs> so. I'm sorry, that, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> just... Let let that let that go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to find something funnier. This is all really dark. There's, there's some unwanted prostitution happening. <laughs> Fanfic 
fiction. All I wanted was some delightful boy-on-boy action. Why did you do this to me? Why? Hey, I told you I just picked one and I sent it to you and I didn't look at it. It's your surprise. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was our fault. We trusted the internet. <laughs> we, we, we trusted the internet. We, we trusted the internet and the internet failed us. Damn you, internet. <laughs> Oh, man. I am either going to lose or gain fans after this. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> um, I, I did say a disclaimer. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. It's uh... <laughs> Zodis is like, maybe you should have said a disclaimer before reading out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for another? Oh, no. No. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, uh... <laughs> you think you're fan out? For today. For today. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But no, oh. guys, if you do have any questions, it is Summer Box in Dallas, Texas. Home of the Lone Star State and a lot of anime companies. And, of course, Felicia. That's right. Have you ever watched Digimon? I did. I used to watch it after school on Fox Kids. Oh my god, you're dating me now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that so much. Um, but no, but when I found out that Ty's little sister was actually my name, I flipped. <laughs> I was just like, no freaking way. Mom, I'm famous. <laughs> She's like, what? I was like, yeah, listen to this. And I turned the TV up as high as it would go, and they they were talking to to my the, to the character that had my name. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Zoda says, saying sorry. I was just trying to find the voice reel. You stop that. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's about as gone as anything on the internet can be, I suppose. Because I mean, this is this is years ago. Because I'm. So ancient. Um, Val had thought of something. Has Felicia ever considered taking the drive to Houston and audition for any of Sentai Filmworks anime? I know Tia got on a show over there. It's um it's not something that I am thinking of now, but if the opportunity ever presented itself, absolutely. Um I am not ever uh, opposed to opportunity um i like to work <laughs> um when when you're an actor you you take what you what you can get you know because all of us just want to be working um but yeah it would be it would be really great and uh it's always nice to meet new people work on you know shows i otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to work on work with people wouldn't have otherwise had the opportunity to work with. So definitely would not say no if they were like, hey, you want to drive down for an audition? Are you planning, uh, uh, do you know if they're going to have another mini con next year and are you going to be there? I don't know the answer to either of those. Um, I think it went really well this year, so they, um, they might do another one, but I probably wouldn't know if they'd like to have me back until much closer. Oh, yeah. The reason why I was asking is because, you know, I live in, I, I don't know if you know where Farmer's Branch is. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not too terrible far. I'm in Irving, uh, Las Colinas. Oh, my goodness. We're neighbors. <laughs> We're neighbors. Um, but I had, I was living in Denton before, and um, a week before we, the, before Mini Acon started, I actually had to move to Dallas and oh. um, just to drive up there was crazy <laughs> but I mean I was the first one there and then uh, three, pe- or three two people had shown up and um, two, the, those two people are now my friends on Facebook so <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah uh, brings I, people together oh yes we're, we're con buddies <laughs> Um, so are you going to be cosplaying, like, what, what is your cosplay going to be of for many, or, wow, for the big Akon? Um, I am working on Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury, um, for their 
Uh, they're attempting to break a world record for most people in one place in video game costume. And I saw one of their posts uh, where they were p- putting up Sonic costumes. <laughs> what's acceptable and what's not. Yeah, well, it's the, the rule is that it has to be someone who originated in a franchise, uh, a video game franchise. Um, so with mine, like, you know, Terry Bogard's in the Fatal Fury OVAs and the motion picture, but the Fatal Fury game came out first, so it's safe. But with something like um, Donald and Goofy, who appear in video games... They appear um, in cartoons first. Exactly. So that's the only caveat. And the other thing is, too, I think they have to be able to look at a picture of the character and look at you, and it has to be recognizable. Um, So they said, like, no steampunk, no, um, like, I guess if you you gender swap, you have to do it, um, you know, with the same pieces Mm -hmm. uh, and everything so that it can be legit. So it looks like there's a lot going into it, but uh, they have a lot of fun stuff going on. If any of you guys are in the area, I know the uh, the local anime Greek organization, um, is it Mu Epsilon Kappa? I think I they so. are they are doing uh, karaoke idol, uh, uh, voiceover idol, uh, masquerade ball. It's a lot of fun stuff. I judged the um, the voiceover idol last year, and it was a lot of fun. Met a lot of really talented people. So if you're interested in that, come on out. I wish I could. I can't afford it. Oh. I I, I just found out that I lost my job uh, yesterday, really. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I, I had a feeling it was happening. Because they told me, oh, hey, I, I mean, I stopped working for them. And they were like, because it was a temporary job. And it was a temp to hire. Well, I got hired on. And they said, okay, well, you're going to have a couple of days off and we'll call you and come back in. So I waited for a couple of days. And I called them. I was like, did I miss a call? Do you need me to come in? What And it yeah. turns out yesterday that I'm fired. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, yeah. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out where I'm going to do next. So. Well, over the internet hugs. Internet hugs. Yay. But, They're the uh, best hugs. Oh, yes. But I, I, uh, I actually have to say, are you going to be at Comic-Con? No, um, not even as an attendee. I am actually going to be uh, back home for a friend's wedding. Congratulations to them. Yeah, we're all pretty excited. They, we like them. Uh, Zodis wants to know if you are watching Mahoka Kofo no Rutose? Um, I have not watched any of the season's simulcasts because of my backlog that goes all the way back to Oran High, as I mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, but I will look up this character. ADV doesn't do streaming online anymore. Oh. Sad face. It's okay. It's not okay, because you <laughs> you I want you, you, once you see Gurren Lagan, oh, well, you, actually, since you're watching Kill a Kill already, once you see Kill a Kill, and then you turn around and you watch Gurren Lagan, you're like, I feel like I'm watching Kill a Kill. <laughs> yeah, I got to, to very briefly see uh, a scene or two from it um for a an anime workshop that i did with uh tony oliver over at bang zoom he does the adventures in voice acting workshops and uh that's actually where i met clifford chapin um and that was one of the scenes and it looked so badass um now you could probably try hulu netflix yeah, they both have it, but it's the sub, and I'm not. I'm not against subs. Nobody flame me. Nobody um, hating. Yeah, nobody hate. But um, I I've always just preferred dub. But um, if if I can't find the dub, I'll go ahead and check out the sub because it's such a an iconic show, and so many people love it. Oh, there's oh my god, there's so many Yoko Littner cosplays and Kamina cosplays and. 
Kill a Kill. I I can't wait to see who gets cast for Kill a Kill. For American dubbing. Oh, you th is it is it getting a dub? Is that I, confirmed? I don't know, but I would like to see who gets cast. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, God, that show. I I've seen so little, but it it would be a a fun challenge for whoever gets it because it's so high energy. I can't remember the one chick's name that follows the main character to school. Mako? Yeah. Oh my god, I love her. Um, I would think that with your characters that you've played thus far, you would fit really nicely. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Because, <laughs> I mean, that just matches, I mean, and just talking with you matches your personality and everything. Yeah. I'd have to, like, just... You know, shotgun and energy drink every five minutes. That girl has got some some spunk. And she talks so crazy fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's um, see. Oh, Raspy, uh, I have seen uh, Champloo um, the first half. I haven't seen the second half. It's on my list. Um, but, no, I liked it a lot. Uh, really... Fun stylization, as always. Uh, you know, the music is fantastic. And Zotus is like, can't find a legal copy of Gurren Logon. And Aww. Mal says, any flex has the license for Kill a Kill. I know if it's well dub it or not. Well, it would be cool to see. Um, I'm, I'm in it. I think Monday we're going to marathon the rest of the, the sub. Because it is just... Such a fun show. It, it's it's a good it's a good series. Like I said, it really it really speeds up and paces up uh, on episode twelve, or right <laughs> after. Uh, Bal offered to to loan me the DVDs, and I, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it is seven seventeen. If you guys have any more questions. Any, please do feel free to ask now or forever hold your Reese's pieces. <laughs> Although, if I if I can just plug for a second here, um, I do have an Ask FM account. If you guys think of questions later, um, go to Ask FM. My username is it's a fee i t s a f e e, and you can ask me questions, and I will answer them at my leisure. And then what else? You, you, uh, if they want to follow you, where can they go? Ah, I am on Twitter at Felicia Angel. Uh, I'm also on Facebook. I have a Felicia Angel account that allows friends, but I don't do anything with that. So you can follow me um, under Felicia Angel Voice Actress, and that's where I post all my updates. Darn, and here I was thinking I could add you and play Farmville with you. Ah, uh, <laughs> never again, never again with Farmville. I I woke up one day after like having been up at three in the morning harvesting blueberries because I had harvested them. They were gonna go bad, and I was like, you know what? I my life is better than this. I <laughs> I need to move on. Yeah, and you know they they've actually updated Farmville from what it used to be, and now it's Farmville Two. Oh wow! And you can now play it on your smartphone and sell your de cellular devices. Oh, see, that's so dangerous. <laughs> so dangerous. <laughs> so, um, what are your what are your top ten animes that you have watched? Ten. Let's see. Um, Bebop. Uh, is definitely up there. Outlaw Star. Oh my god. Gee. Oh. Yes, right? Mm. Dim Continue. pixels. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Gundam Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, Fruits Basket. Oh, that was a sad... You know what? We were actually talking about that, me and uh, Natalie. Um, because... They they need to come out with a season two or just redo the whole thing because now that the manga is over, they left out a lot of detail to that anime. Uh, yeah, no, I am. Um, 
I did not know how much there was uh, until after, and then the, you know, a friend of mine started reading the manga, um, or manga if you prefer. It's another controversy stirring up here tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's so much story there. But uh, yeah, no, love, love that show. Um, let's see, I think that was five. Is that five? We're gonna say it was five. Um, <laughs> Um, Evangelion, which, uh, recently came into my life. Um, I actually had just started before I got cast in Ava 3. Um, Cliff loaned me his big box set of Ava because I had never seen it. And I was like two episodes in and then I got the call that I had been cast. I was like, well, this is pretty good timing. <laughs> um, DBZ. Is up there. Uh, Berserk. Berserk is a fun one. Um, if we can go into movies, uh, Summer Wars, Wolf Children. Oh my god, Wolf Children made me cry. Right? Um, the feels coaster did not stop. No, there is, there is this line that I just loved is when uh the the dad i i don't know that they ever give him a name um the wolf man i think is how he's credited um there he and hana are walking and he's talking about how each apartment is like its own little world um and he's always wanted a place like that where he could belong and she says well i could belong there too if you don't mind the company and i was like all oh, my tears all of them just left my body it was a flood of tears so good um let's see huh i know i'm forgetting things because i'm on the spot <laughs> <laughs> well, the conversation would be over oh dang it there's that 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 yeah um, exactly oh oh fma uh full metal alchemist so good what about fmab i okay so here's what ha happened was, <laughs> we got really into fma like really into it just diving in and um we finished this marathon of maybe the last 12 episodes all in like a day it was just like all of it and then it was over and we had that post anime or you know video you, you are just so depressed because it's over. And we were like, let's just start Brotherhood. And we did. And I was like, I can't, I can't go back, man. It's too far. You see Hughes and you're just like, nope, nope, I'm done. I can't, I can't do this again. So we're taking a little breather to let the wounds heal. Uh, Zotus wants to know, is Clannad and Clannad after story in your list? They are. I think somebody actually recommended that to me on Ask FM along with Anohana. Um and said that they were gonna make me cry a lot. So I'm waiting for Oh, oh dear. I, Val Val I, is just asking me questions and we're asking you questions. Um uh, number one, how long does it usually take to record a series? Um, that depends on how long the series is, um, whether we are working on time, whether we have um, all of the scripts in, uh, whether other actors are available, like if they're out of towners or have conventions or stuff. It, it really varies pretty wildly from series to series. Um, but for like a, a lead role with a lot of lines... God, let's see. I think we did almost like 80 hours or some nonsense for Aesthetica, just for me. Um, so it takes a lot. <laughs> is the several, several months probably. Number two, do any of the ADR directors you've worked with have any specific directing styles? They all do. Everyone is different. Um... Like, Jerry is is really sort of light, and, um, you know, he keeps things fun in the booth, and he'll, like, uh, it's hard to explain. His style is a little more, I think, melodic. Like, he likes to hear 
a certain beat pattern and stuff, almost musical. Um, let's see, Bevins is hilarious, and he is exacting. He knows exactly what he wants from the read, and, like, that's what you're going to do. Um, I can't remember who I was talking to, but they said with Bevins, you might do a line a hundred times, but you never leave a session thinking, I could have done that better. Um, Colleen is very much the same way. Um, just she knows and Mike, they they know what they want and like that's what they're going to get. Joel is really uh, is really go with the flow and uh, is kind of an actor's director. You know, he um, he'll let you do the line and then is like, oh, all right, I, I see where you were going with that. But let's. Let's change it up a little bit. Um, Tyler, I've only worked with Tyler for Fairy Tale, and he knows that series inside and out. So he knows, you know, he knows what the the next person is going to sound like. He knows what the person before you sounded like, and he knows what you have to sound like to fit in. And he is so good about like just like detail. Like he will tell you exactly what you need, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. I feel like I'm forgetting people. But yeah, everybody is is different, and everybody has their own style that they develop over time. And then number three from Val was, did you know that high school DXD and aesthetic of a rogue hero are both based on light novels? If they ever got translated, do you think you would read them, or ever read them? Or, and or, do you even read books? <laughs> I read books. I <laughs> I have a tattoo of books. Um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a bookworm. Um, I I probably would read them, especially Aesthetica, to know what happens. Um, it's we're so far out that I'm doubting a second season is going to come, and so I'd really like to know how everything resolves. Um, DXD. I don't know if I would because the dub is so funny. It is hilarious, and it's it's one of the big draws for me. Is Scott Freeman is a genius with Issei. I mean, just so funny that I don't know if if you know if it was like sort of directly translated without um, you know the the writing staff and Jamie Markey. If I would be as interested. And you guys all missed it earlier. She gave us a sample of that 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 voice she did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, Raz P, I have seen Death Note. It's definitely on there. I, I stopped a few short. I stopped counting. I was just naming stuff I liked. But Death Note was really good. Um, I, uh, I liked the tone of it a lot. And uh, the, the infamous chip scene is one of my favorites. Um, there was actually a... Um, you know, the keep calm, you know, and just blah, blah, blah. Right. There was a poster that had Ezra, or Urza, from Fairy Tale. Mm -hmm. And it says, don't keep calm, I'll just ate Urza's cake. <laughs> Everyone panic. <laughs> And Val says, thanks for all the answers. Very cool to hear about the directors, LOL. You're welcome. Yeah, so it was rambly because, like, you, you try to, like, think and sum up the way someone someone does a job. And they are all just really good at it. They they know what they're doing and they are um, they're pretty fun people to, to go in a booth and work with all alone for several hours on end. Like, if they weren't awesome people, that could be not fun at all, but they just make it a blast. Um, but no, I think you did a really good job as Coco, and especially uh, Mew. Oh, thank you! Oh, sure. I'm, I'm gonna have to look into Bento now, since now I know two people that have been in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bento is a trip. It, uh... It's one of those that is so over the top um, and you just have to suspend your disbelief and go with it. And it was just one of those shows where you go in and like some shows you think like, OK, how serious am I going to have to be? You know what? What part is like this one? It is just 
put all your energy out there, have as much fun as you can, and it, it takes care of the rest with the writing and the and the story. Sounds like it. I mean, I've, I've read up on it, and I'm like, okay, I'll add that to my list, because I've got to finish up... Uh, I have my own list. Yeah. <laughs> so, Everyone I'm, does. It's it's not like back in my day. Well, some see, ancient. But uh <laughs> Well see for me for me I'm one of those people that I like subs. But I'm converting to um watching subs and then when a cast gets announced, then I'll watch the dub. Because I, I love that anime, regardless. You could pay me, you know, two million dollars to watch, you know, dubbed all day long, it, as long as it's an anime that I've already know the storyline and how the characters are and all that other stuff, you know? But that that's just how I am. And when I know that there's characters in anime that have a good background story and have a good you know, personality is what I want to, I love personality. Personality is always key with me. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Oh, so. yeah. You, you've you got to be able to, to relate to a character. They have to be fleshed out in such a way that they seem real, even though they're not. Otherwise, you, you can't, you can't feel anything for them. Well, see, and that's why I was saying, because um, I, I went to Hobby Lobby, um, and I don't, know if you remember, but uh, I can't remember how to properly pronounce his name, and he is going to butcher me the next time I see him, but um, Mika from... Micah? Th thank you. Micah. <laughs> he had put it out uh, for the fairy tale panel, a whole bunch of stuff for him to autograph off to the side, and anybody else that was on that panel uh, for autographs mm -hmm. to sign it as well, because they were also in that, in that anime. And um, he, he when he signed the, I had just gotten frames for my Wolf Children poster. And someone asked me, what's this about? I was like, you really want to know? They're like, yeah. Let's just say you're going to be on a roller coaster of feels. <laughs> and you're going to think, you're going to relate to this if you were ever in a single parent situation. Like, for real. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, it, it's masterful and understated, and, uh, you know, the, the same director did Summer Wars, which has that same sort of appeal. It's, it's about heart, and it's about family, and they're just, they, they make you sad, but it, it's like the warm, fuzzy kind of sadness, where you're like, good for them. They did their best. I, I remember, um, uh... Laura, I think her name is Laura, the one that did, um... Tsukimi? Yeah. From, uh, Princess Jellyfish? I think that's the no. right name. No, 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 no. Uh, Wolf Children. Oh, Laura Woodhull, yeah. yeah. Yeah, same girl, same girl. Same girl, really? Or, wait, no, no, Clara. She was Clara. Sorry, Tsukimi's the girl. She's the, she's the jellyfish. She's the jellyfish. Clara. I, I just finished that because it was in my backlog. <laughs> I, I, and hey, I just finished that too. I want more. <laughs> but, um, no, the, what I was going to say was we actually, someone actually got a video of her saying, I'm going to be a little girl all the way home. Oh. <laughs> in, in the voice, too. She's like, and I just learned how to say this in Japanese, too. So get this, too. <laughs> and she said it in, in the Japanese quote. And we were just like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, too cute. <laughs> so, but, oh, it, that was a sad movie. But I didn't know she was in Princess Jellyfish. Yeah, she's Clara the Jellyfish. I think that might have been her very first role. And she sounds adorable. Oh, she's she, she is adorable. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause I mean, I I was told if I didn't watch Princess Jellyfish, I'd die. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I I value my life, so I'll watch it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's worth it too. It's so good. That Laura, her voice is too cute from Mal. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> um. 
<sighs> so guys, do you have any more questions? Because I know Miss Felicia wants to get to eat her nachos. <laughs> do you eat your nachos with jalapenos? I don't. Um, I've only recently uh, gotten into spicy foods. Um, I, I never, it wasn't about the flavor, I just couldn't handle them. Uh, up until recently, um, my my husband ordered some atomic wings for a get together we were having, and of course nobody wanted to have anything to do with these monstrosities. Uh, so the next day we had some leftover, and he was like, "I dare you," and I was like, "I'm gonna die," but I did it anyway for some reason. It was it was one of the worst decisions of my life, guys. Poor choice. Don't give in to peer pressure. Um, but it it turned some sort of switch in me because since then I have been craving spicy food. Um, it's, it's weird. I'm going to be so upset if this is like my Spider-Man moment, like, you know, she ate an atomic hot wing and now she likes spicy foods, but like, that's the only power I get from it. <laughs> well, it's no, because so if you eat something super extra spicy, you gain flaming breath, like a ghost pepper or something. Ooh, I like that. See, the the other working theory was that um, the the more spicy foods I eat, the higher tolerance I get, and eventually I'm going to be able to like eat an asteroid or an expanding star that's gonna <laughs> engulf the Earth, and then I'll save us all. Um, what else was there? Um, but no, do you do you use canned cheese or do you use um, real cheese, like you have to shred it. Shred shredded, all the way. Oh, high five, girl. <laughs> yeah, gotta do it right. I, I, I'm sorry, the, the places like ballparks and stuff where they just pour the cheese. Oh, See, sometimes you need it though. Sometimes you're like, I want a trashy plate of like plastic cheese nachos. <laughs> And it's going to, like, you know, I feel like like it's some sort of comfort. Like, that's going to fix something in your life if you eat these nachos. You know, I don't know if they have a Del Taco in Irving, but they actually do that. And it's good when they do that. Oh. They, put, they put all the cheese off to the side, like all your melted cheese. Uh, they'll give you, like, a box of chips. And they'll put your cheese to the side. You'll get some uh, Rotel tomatoes. You'll get jalapenos if you want them. You'll get um, lettuce, which I've never put lettuce on nachos, but it was pretty good. See, it sounds like they're trying to con me into constructing my own nachos. <laughs> That's not what I'm paying you for, Del Taco. <laughs> put the toppings on for me. <laughs> well, because it's, it's like in a, you know those um, to-go boxes? Oh, okay. That's that's how it's set up. And so for you not to spill all the contents all over the place and make a mess, that's why they do that. Oh, see, that's smart. I still, still am <laughs> against the principle, I think, of fast food making me assemble my own. I mean, come on. Hey, I mean, that's what Subway is doing. They're assembling it for you, but you still have to pick out everything you want. Mm -hmm. See, it's true. It's true. They've been conning us this whole time and, and getting away with it. And same thing goes with Chipotle. Mm-hmm. And Freebirds. Mm. Do you like, okay, Freebirds versus Chipotle, go. It depends on the location. Um, I used to live uh, closer to downtown, mm -hmm. and there I would go with Freebirds any day. Now that we're here, our Freebirds, for some reason, everything is, like, ridiculously salty, and they don't respect extra cheese. Like, I tell them extra cheese, and I get, like, less cheese than I would have originally wanted. It's like, no, 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 extra. Um, and so for those... Those reasons, I have to go with Chipotle now. Um, I don't know. I mean, the one... I ha okay, hold up. I I'm going to do a food side swipe here. <laughs> when you were in Denton for a mini con, did y'all just leave and go back home after it? Or did you hang around Denton for a little bit? Oof, girl. I went home and took a just <laughs> fat nap. Like, I think I just went to sleep at, like... Six. Um, we did that up. Uh, the fairy tale 
autograph session was the last thing of the day. And in that like hour and a half, I think we saw like 300 people. I was exhausted. My, <laughs> my extrovert bubble was like worn so thin. It was like, all right, hold my energy down. Got to put the introvert bubble on now. Go home, put on my PJs and sleep for a week. Well, because I was going to say, did you know that they actually have a macaroni bar? Over by Fry Street, where oh. you can you can buy like macaroni and cheese, uh, macaroni salad. I did not know. This sounds magical. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's on Fry Street. Wow. <laughs> I I am gonna have to find this now. That is amazing. <laughs> yep, you can buy any kind of macaroni pasta thing there, and you know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Raspy wants to know, have you seen Starcross? And if so, have you heard that it got canceled? I did hear that it got canceled. I, uh, I don't have cable. So it comes I... On, it comes on WP33. Oh, I don't... I don't TV, I guess. <laughs> I just do, like, the, like, Netflix and Hulu and stuff. Is it, is it on either of those? Because if so, I, I would very much like to watch it. I just like to watch my series all in one go. But I'm sad it got cancelled. Um, I know Brina was in it, and she's ridiculously talented, so I'm sure she did a great job. Um, Supernatural. Are you a fan of that? No, I, you know, boo hiss. I know, sorry guys. Um, I only ever saw, like, two episodes of it, and then by the time it came back on my radar, it was so long, the series, and now I'm intimidated. Yeah, now it's ten seasons long. They're going to be having a tenth season. Jeez. See, and I I like um I like my series short and sweet and uh wrap them up. You know, I don't usually get into like the long shown in anime for the same reason. Although I, I am beginning One Piece. Which oh my feels God. Like, it's a great show. I have loved the episodes I've seen. I'm really excited to get into it. But every time I watch an episode, I'm like, man, I'm booking. I'm on episode 9 of 500. Okay. Uh, oh, no, it's more Drop than 500 the now. Is it? <laughs> that, was than... my, that was my outlandish <laughs> estimate. It's more than 500 now. It's just like a Naruto Shippuden. It, they're already up at, like, 650. Oh, <sighs> man, it's... But uh, it's it's so fun that I I feel like I gotta I gotta at least try it and and trudge on even if it takes me a while. So okay, let me ask you this because it's coming on tonight, and you know that it, the Twitter you, the Twitterverse is going to be all a twittering of it. If you were in the world of Attack on Titan, be honest, how screwed would you be? I'd be dead. I would be Titan food so fast. <laughs> Like, if, if we're just talking IRL, like, I'm not very fast, and I'm probably going to panic a little bit, um, and I am not, I, I don't feel like if all of a sudden my life became anime, like, I don't feel like I would have pink hair and be the protagonist, like, <laughs> I'd be the brown-haired classmate, <laughs> so I don't think they'd be saving me, um, but, like, in, in my head, my idealized version of myself, I think I'd, you know, I'd do fine and I'd, I'd go and, and be a scout and, you know, frugal my fry height and all of that <laughs> and uh, just be, like, badass. But if, if I'm realistic, I think they would just, <laughs> I'd be, like, fast food. They'd be like, oh, yay, nom. Okay, so let's do this. Because now, now, now that I got a, a general perspective, um... Aesthetic of a rogue hero. How, tell me, tell me, if you were there in real life, how would it? How, what would you be? Like, how, how, would, what would your role play out if you, if you were introduced as a new character to the series? I would probably be the, the like, the group mom, telling people like, you cannot go around groping folks. <laughs> this is unacceptable. <laughs> um. <laughs> And he'd be like, but I have good intentions. They learn life lessons. It's a no means no. That's like... <laughs> um, Bento, same mm -hmm. question. 
I I think I think me and Oshiroi would be buddies. Um, and I like her technique. You know, it's all about these these bento brawls and people just bashing each other's heads in for the glory of the half price bento. But Oshiroi's like she waits while everybody else muscles it out and then like sneaky sneaks. And I think I think that would be my tactic. Be a stealth bento brawler. Fairy tale. Oh man. <laughs> I'd probably be hanging out with Kana drinking. Just yes. <laughs> just chill. Um so great to put some damn clothes on. <laughs> or not. I mean, you know. <laughs> what 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 would your magic power be if you were in Fairy Dale? Huh. I don't know. I um I definitely would would want some sort of elemental magic. So I am I'm drawn to both fire and water, but I I think See, nobody wants to be Aquaman. This is the problem. So if I had water magic, it would need to be like self-created. I don't want to need to be within 5 feet of a puddle to be effective. Well, uh, Juvia's Juvia's body is supposed to be all made of water. Oh. Okay, well then, okay, we'll just go with water, and I won't do the, like, you know, be careful what you wish for caveats, and I'll just hang out with her all the time. <laughs> just um, in case I need. Um, Devil is a part-timer. See, that show, I... Man, I'd hope I would be one of the more fortunate people from Inte Isla because that seems like a cool place um, and they get the powers because otherwise like and Chiho is a great character not knocking Chiho but otherwise you are just working at McDonald's, <laughs> and I don't think I'd really want to do that unless I also got magic powers probably hang out with Lucifer a lot just on the internet in the apartment chilling together um, high school DXD. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if I could, I know what happens to her, but I'd like to just, like, be Rainier. Like, just do that. <laughs> you know? Because she's so evil. Like, and I never get, like, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity sort of thing. Like, that's never going to happen in my life that I just, like, magical girl transform and stab someone. So I would like that experience. You would like that experience? Magical girl transform <laughs> and stab someone. He oh, lives. From Felicia. Look, okay, he <laughs> got better. <laughs> It was only a flesh wound. Yeah, exactly. It'll get better. And now he's living the dream. He's got a harem. He's the harem king. He's fine. <laughs> or, or is he? Don't, don't, don't. Controversy. <laughs> Throwing down the gauntlet. <laughs> uh, ours, uh, Raz P says, or Sintucky. No, not Sintucky. They are evil. They're stealing <laughs> profits from McDonald's, making things hard on Mao. He's trying to work his way up to full-time employee, okay? And they are not helping. Oh, heavy day. This is, this is turning out to be a really good interview. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> We've done everything, haven't we? We laughed. We cried. We read Yaoi. We answered <laughs> questions. <laughs> We didn't even read Yaoi. We didn't even get to the juicy parts. We didn't. We we read the exposition that was leading up, and then it got weird. And then it Thank got you, weird. internet. <laughs> uh, that guy who worked there in part timer looked like James from Pokemon. Right? He really did. Is it Sariel? Yeah. Oh my God. Is like like a copy paste, but evil. He does some terrible things. We don't like him. Like in Pokemon? Always trying to steal and abduct the Pikachu? No, I mean, I meant Sario. <laughs> James, I like. <laughs> and our, uh, Raz P said he did. LOL. <laughs> yeah. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
so you, we've got ten more minutes with Miss Felicia. If you guys have any more questions or just want to tell her how awesome she is, speak now or forever oh. hold your Reese's Pieces. It's the lightning round, guys. It's the lightning round. I'll, I'll start playing Jeopardy music. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, you know what? Um, I actually was thinking there's a website that's called Behind the Voice Actor. Have you mm -hmm. ever been there? I have. You have? I have. I actually today just got my 15th roll up there. Yeah, I Google myself. I'm a narcissist. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I was, uh, I was asking is because they have casting calls all the oh. time on there. And it's like I'd never find any actual real deal kind of stuff. You know? Hmm. Yeah, I haven't looked into that at all. Um, they do a I, they'll do a lot of fan dubbing. A lot. Ah, uh, that makes sense. That's why I'm saying I want the real deal. I want the, you know. Well, um, I actually, up until earlier this year, uh, for three years, worked for uh, Voice123, which is a pay-to-play voiceover casting site. Um, and there are a few sites like that. Um, Voice123 has an annual fee, and it's, it's more recommended if you have lots of experience behind you, but essentially with all the pay-to-plays, you pay either a yearly or monthly fee, and you just get emailed about um, jobs that are available that match your profile with your age range and, and things like that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, so probably guys, the the big three are Voice123, Voice Bunny, which Voice Bunny is um, free, uh, but you get screened and they can reject you if your audio quality and performance aren't good enough. Um, and then Voices.com. Is Voices.com free? No. Voices.com um, offers a yearly and a monthly. And I think the monthly is forty forty dollars um trying to think of other ones there you know you have to be really careful because when you're just starting out it's um it's easy to sort of want to grab at anything that's available but right. it really does pay to be discerning so like there are sites like fiverr and stuff and not knocking you if you if you do that and it works for you but if you are putting together a home studio that is of quality and you know can can put out uh, you know really clean audio you have invested in that you've invested in your acting so five dollars for um for work in there isn't really recouping on your investment so believe in yourself believe in your worth uh val asks you oh i see felicia is voicing someone in haganai next I'm Haganai next. Which I'm getting soon. Maybe talk about that character. That is Aoi Yusa, and she is a little spitfire. I loved her. Um, she shows up around episode seven, um, and she is Sina's rival that Sina has no idea exists. Um, <laughs> she uh, she's just spent years constantly competing with Sina, and Sina does not know she is alive. Um, and she's just a lot of fun. Cute little redhead tough tomboy. Um, so we got six more minutes, guys. This is really lightning round. Mm -hmm. Down to the wire. Oh, what do you think about Sailor Moon coming back? I'm excited. It was one that um, was definitely on my radar when I was younger, but um, I didn't get into it as heavily as I got into uh, DBZ or uh, Gundam Wing, mm -hmm. but it's it's so iconic, and you know, it got, it it fell victim a little bit, it's early incarnation to the, the process at the time of putting anime on TV. Mm -hmm. 
And so I'm interested to see it go the direction that it was intended to go and see how everything ends up. Supposed to be two episodes each month for a year. Whoa, wow, that is... They are That's... dangling that carrot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen any of the um, the live-action Sailor Moon musicals? Actually, I want to. Legally. I... Yeah, I had a friend who used to to buy the imported versions of uh, like their promo CDs and stuff, and um, they are just fantastic and so campy. I love musicals, um, and I'm just a big fan of anything kind of crazy and off the wall in general. And so you got them doing like all this fight choreography, and she goes eternal, like in the middle of the stage, she's just spinning and wings, and it's fantastic. Have you seen Black Butler? I just met Grell in Black Butler. It's in my backlog, <laughs> but uh, that's where I stopped a few days ago. They are actually bringing back a season three. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Well, that, I'm sure people are going to be excited about that. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people, I mean, it's supposed to be carrying on throughout the book as well, because uh, the, the season three, I think, is what they're calling it is Book of Circus. So I have no idea what's going to go on there, but they, they've really paced it. Oh, I know one that you would like if you like musicals. Yes. Mall Cross Frontier. I have not seen it. I will add that to the pile. <laughs> uh, Mall Cross Frontier. They will. I don't know why they have not dubbed this. I don't know why. Um, but it is a very musical mecha anime. Oh well, music and mech. That's I can get behind that. <laughs> and they're killing a lot of bugs. Ooh. So if, Did you like... so if you don't like bugs, that's definitely See, I immediately thought of Ender's Game for some reason <laughs> well, with the bugs. I was like, oh, neat. They're... Oh, no, actual. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't remember what they, they actually called them in the, the anime itself. But, it's, I mean, it's an excellent, excellent anime. So. Uh, I will write that down. Uh, we've got about two more minutes left, so guys, I'm gonna go. Don't go anywhere, please, guys. So I'll okay. You after this, so, um, but guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and listening in. It has been a very much most pleasure having this interview with Miss Felicia. And I hope I'm saying your name right. You haven't corrected me once at all. Uh, it, you know, I mean, it's I say Felicia, but um, I've I've gotten Felicia, and it sounds fancy, so. <laughs> I was just gonna go. I was gonna for a while. I was just gonna call you Fia, but I was like, no, that's not right. <laughs> well, Fee is what most people call me um, since I was like fourteen. So it's been it's been weird being um, addressed almost exclusively by Felicia, you know, for professional stuff. <laughs> well, because every time I if you, now that you say that, I would be thinking Nanny McPhee. <laughs> so. But now, now things, I want to have that stuck in my head. You should go watch it. It's delightful. I have watched it over 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And I've watched the second and the third. I did not know there were sequels. Yes, there were sequels. See, you got to stop this because my <laughs> list is... <laughs> it's growing. Yeah. Santa's looking at my list and he's like, whoa. You know? <laughs> Um, but, uh, but like I said, thank you so much for having this interview with me. Hopefully later on down the road, I can do a catch up interview with you and we can see how things have been going for you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, just stay tuned because there's some more fun stuff, you know, coming along this year, I hope. And uh, I'd love to come back. You guys were so much fun. Thank you for going on this on this journey with us, the trip that we've been on. <laughs> It was a wild one. <laughs> so, um, with this being said, guys, um, thank you for tuning in. 
and I will see you guys uh, next time. Bye!